First of all, this video is brought to you by Squarespace, the best place to build a beautiful website. And second of all, there's only one thing I care about in this life. The DVD logo, which is now bouncing around the screen. I want to know when it's going to hit the corner. And so do you, because when it hits the corner, you know what goes down. So the question is, can you mathematically make a simulation for something like this? Figure out not only if it's going to hit the corner of the screen, but if we can pick the initial position and the direction, you know, when is it going to hit the corner? Well, uh, I've made a simulation that does just that. Let me walk you through it because this is a thing I made and it's important. So what you're looking at right now is the black abyss of whatever screen you're using and I want you to familiarize yourself with it, right? It has an x-axis going from left to right, a y-axis going bottom to top, and for the sake of simplicity I'm just gonna make our screen a little bit smaller so we can see what happens out of bounds. I'm now gonna select a random point inside of our screen, this can be our kind of sample point, the one that we're inspecting, and let's also assign a random direction while we're at it so anywhere along the circle can describe a direction, such that when we launch this particle now in that direction Direction, we know what trajectory it's going to use. Of course, it's going to go outside the bounds of the screen, which is a, a fucking problem, but we can correct for this. Because if we look at the casted out ray, we know at some point it has to intersect our screen. In other words, it has to go to the bounds. And at that point, we know we want to have some kind of collision. But the problem is we now need to know what direction it's going to end up going in. If we go a bit closer, you can actually figure out what that vector is pretty simply because we know what the incoming vector is. We know what the normal of the screen is in some sense. And all we want to do is reflect it based off that normal. That should be the outgoing vector. Mathematically, that's going to end up looking like, you know, taking a dot product to find the angle of this, and then you double it to kind of swivel it by two. So it's going out the other direction, and now you have your outgoing vector. So boom, uh, we, we have a collision, but of course, you know, same fucking problem, right? It's going to go out of bounds. So the way that I generated this with the uh, geometry nodes is I kind of redid this calculation over and over and over again. I think I did five or six collisions, uh, because when you look at the node network, this thing gets monstrous. But if at some point we get a loop node, then I'll be able to, you know, generalize it however many collisions. But whatever, uh, we have five or six collisions for our simulation. And of course, let's not forget what we're interested in is knowing when this thing hits a corner. So we need to have some kind of condition for that. So let's say that it goes fairly near a corner because it can't go exactly in there, right? There's always going to be a bit of bouncing uh, within some threshold. I'll say if it kind of goes inside the zone, uh, we'll color our particle a different color and we'll say, boom, this has hit the corner at some point. So what we have so far is a, a very simple simulation. You know, you have a particle, a direction, it bounces, and if it hits a corner, any four of them, um, it turns green. Which means let's now just generalize this thing. Let's spawn in a bunch of points and run the simulation. And, uh, you know, now we can see, you know, which ones turn green and we can launch this at uh, randomly distributed points, uh, sparse points, dense points, it doesn't really matter. But uh, the key takeaway is, you know, we know which particles are eventually going to hit the corner. So let's take that information and actually color our particles to begin with. So we know which ones are going to hit before uh, we even launch the simulation. Well, what you're going to notice is that they kind of follow this geometric pattern. Uh, no matter what direction we pick, they, they kind of come in these bands of lines. Um, and if you think about it, that makes sense because if a particle is going to collide, right, with the corner, the one right before it that's going in the same direction that's trailing it, of course, is also going to hit it. So of course, you get these geometric lines and that's going to change depending on the direction. Even more interestingly, again, if we're running a simulation with only five or six collisions, which is a big preface for this, right? I'm only doing five or six collisions, right? This might be different if it's infinite. You're going to notice that the denser our grid is, like the more points that we're sampling, you're going to see in proportion, uh, this thing kind of like shrinks to zero in terms of what points actually end up hitting the corner. So like the probability of picking a random point and it's going to hit the corner under our conditions and five to six collisions, uh, it, it's approaching zero, uh, which I thought was also interesting. But now, since we set up this simulation, why have one direction that we launch this in? What if we have multiple directions, like the ones on the left are going one direction, the ones on the right? Uh, well, then our kind of grid of, you know, the ones we know that are going to hit eventually within five or six uh, things is going to start looking more interesting. And if we were to take our like direction and randomize the shit out of it, right? Every point goes in a different direction based off some noise thing. Well, one, we get a very cool looking simulation, uh, but we also get this kind of band map in some sense. So this is, you can think of this as our solution map. Uh, these are the points that are going to eventually hit the corner within, again, five to six collisions. And I don't know, I just thought that was interesting. That, that, that's it. Hey everybody, thank you for watching my exploration on the DVD corner thing. I, I got tired of the idea a day into 
is simulating it, but whatever, it's done now. Um, and this exploration is sponsored by Squarespace. No, not that one. You doofus, uh, Squarespace, the service that lets you make websites. If you're in the market for making a website and you don't wanna code everything and you just wanna basically use very good looking presets to begin with, drag and drop, uh, my website, cgmatter.com, was made uh, with Squarespace, uh, you should check it out because it's honestly one of the fastest and most aesthetically pleasing ways to make a website of your very own. Some stuff you might be interested in with Squarespace is there are analytics, so you can see how many people, where are they coming from, who is coming to your website. This is important information. Also, email campaigns if you're, you know, trying to acquire customers and stuff like this and you want to send out an email, or you, you could send out an email directly to your customers, an email campaign. And while Squarespace is already super affordable, especially for what it is, uh, I'm here why I mean, why are we here? But I I'm here to make that deal even sweeter. You can click the link that I have in the description to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain with Squarespace. So check it out, especially if you're in the market for making a website, which obviously that would be the case for this.